وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, we were looking at the surah, surah al-Baqarah, how Allah commences it by mention of the fact that there is no doubt in this book. In it, there is guidance for those who are conscious of Allah, those who develop the correct relationship with Allah. So right at the beginning of the Quran, Allah talks about the fact that you shouldn't doubt the Quran. Where there is doubt, there cannot be healing. Where there is doubt, there will never be hope. So Allah concentrates on the issue of no doubt. This book, there is no doubt in it. It is authentic. It is absolutely correct. Allah says, لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. In a translation, we could say, there is no doubt in it. There is guidance for those who develop taqwa. And just to recap with what you may know, taqwa is to develop the consciousness of Allah, developing the correct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is taqwa. So when we say there is no doubt in this book and there is guidance in it for those who have taqwa, it means if we try to develop the correct relationship with Allah, that is the only time we will be able to benefit from revelation and from our relationship with Allah. How will I know what Allah wants from me if I haven't read the Quran? And how will the Quran impact upon me if I am not interested in developing the correct relationship with Allah or becoming conscious of Allah? So these are all interconnected matters. Remember that your taqwa is closely connected to how you are with the Quran. Your guidance is closely connected with your relationship with Allah and your search for guidance. So continue searching and continue pushing yourself to do the right thing. My brother, my sister, you know what is right. You know what is wrong. You have to be strong enough to push yourself to do what you already know is right. And you have to push yourself to protect yourself from what you know is wrong. Simple. That is taqwa, to create a barrier between yourself and the wrath of Allah, the anger of Allah. When we talk of the anger of Allah, generally, we would be conscious of not displeasing Allah so that we don't anger Him because we love Him so much, we don't want Him to be upset with us. So it is actually something born out of love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and protection. So if you ask yourself, who are those who develop the correct relationship with Allah? Those who have hope always, those whom the verses of the Quran will heal. Remember that. Yes, the verses of the Quran have healing in them, but not just for anyone and everyone. For those who believe in the Quran, they will achieve comfort. They will achieve contentment. Look at what Allah says. الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. He mentions three beautiful points. He says those who believe in the unseen, they don't have a doubt. They believe in the unseen. There is a heaven coming. There is goodness coming. And subhanallah, even if the world laughs at you, you're a believer and you know, just like I was somewhere before I was born, I'm going to go somewhere after I die. I was with my creator before I was born and I'm going to return to my creator after I die. And inshallah, I will go to a much better place. But I will live my life to the full extent on condition that it is within what Allah has ordained. And that's why Allah says, those who are muttaqin are the ones who believe in Allah. They pray and they spend from what Allah gave them. Why these two qualities, the quality of prayer? You must pray. We pray five times a day. We should be praying. The reason is it is your link with Allah. You want hope, you want healing, you want cure, you want contentment. How can you achieve that without prayer? How can you achieve contentment that belongs to Allah without connection that is with Allah. 
amazing. You need to think of that. So Allah says, on one hand, you must be on the best possible level of relationship with me, your maker. And on the other hand, he says, think about others I've made. You're not the only one on earth. If I've blessed you with something, use it to give others. That's why Allah marries the two here. يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. They spend from that which we gave them. So they give charity and over and above the charity. You see other people in need? Do you feel for them? It will bring about a lot of healing when you sit with those who are broken and try to heal them. You see? You want to be healed? Learn to help others in their difficulties and Allah will help you in your difficulty. That's the message of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you create ease for someone by the help of Allah, the permission of Allah, Allah will create ease for you in this world and the next. If you are trying to give hope to the hopeless, you will be the most hopeful person, subhanAllah. Because we all have emotions, we're all just human beings, we all have days and will have days where we're perhaps low compared to other days. But who will help us? Allah. What will help us? Whatever we've done for the cause of Allah, the sake of Allah, the relationship with Allah will help and what you've done for others will help you too. When you help someone heal, Allah will grant you healing. When you help someone by giving them hope, Allah will help you the day shaitan comes to try and mess with you in order to make you slightly hopeless. Remember this. So it's amazing. You know, we haven't yet progressed so much in this particular series in terms of moving through the pages of the Quran simply because right at the beginning, it's jam packed with a lot of lessons of healing and hope. But did we ever look at it this way? That's the question. So Allah says, do you believe in the unseen? You'd better do that if you want goodness. And pray because that's your connection with Allah. And take care of others. Spend on them from what Allah gave you. If Allah wanted, he could have turned the tables. So when you're going through hardship, remember, it's just Allah. And Allah is testing us. And this is why in the very next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who believe in what was revealed to you and what was revealed before you, and they have full conviction in the hereafter. They are totally convinced about the hereafter. My brothers and sisters, never doubt the hereafter and never doubt the fact that Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful, the most kind. Subhanallah. So you're going to go back to he who is the most forgiving, the most kind, the most merciful. At least do some deeds that would give him reason to grant you and I paradise and then have hope. And each time you seek the forgiveness of Allah, which should be on a daily basis, have hope that you're totally forgiven. Look forward with clean conviction that you are going back to Allah who is the most merciful. You've tried your best. You're not an angel. You're not perfect. You're just a human. For your heart to heal, you need to make sure you have hope in Allah. That's amazing. Look at how the two are interconnected. You have hope in Allah and that's what will heal you. So when we say verses of hope and healing, the two are interconnected. In order to heal, you need hope. Without hope, you can never heal. Remember this, my brothers and sisters, and therefore believe in the hereafter. Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those are the ones who are upon the guidance from their Lord. In Surah Al-Fatiha, remember we asked Allah for guidance. Now Allah is saying, who are the guided ones? They believe in the hereafter. They believe in Allah. They believe in what was revealed. They believe in the unseen. They pray to Allah and they reach out to others in the best possible way. Imagine, honest with Allah, honest with the rest of creation. And Allah says, they are the ones who are upon the real guidance. And they are the ones who will be the ultimately successful. They are the successful. Amazing verses of the Quran. Allah is purifying you, giving you lots of hope that is going to heal you completely. And he's telling you, don't worry, better days are to come. And the best days will follow after your death. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from that. Now, if you take a look at the first instruction that Allah has issued in the Quran, verse number 21 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, O people, worship your Lord. Ya rabbakum. O people, worship your Lord. Who is your Lord? The one who created you and created all those before you in order that you achieve the correct relationship with Allah. I pray that Allah grant us this beautiful relationship. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين